Okay folks, here's a quick video showing how to hook up a manifold set for the air conditioning and refrigeration system. You have your compressor here. This is the Psycho Psyche, um, but regardless, you'll have two access ports. You'll have a high pressure side and a low pressure side. Uh, the high pressure side is what feeds the um, liquid refrigerant up to the evaporator box where it turns into a gas chills the coil and that's where you get your cold air for the air conditioner uh, then it comes back as a low pressure vapor into the compressor and then gets compressed to a high pressure vapor which goes down down here there is a um, condenser coil that um, converts the high pressure gas back into a liquid and then that liquid gets sent back up to the coil and over and over and over again <clears throat> so to evacuate the system typically what you would do is this you have a manifold gauge set here And here in the US, they are color coded. Your low pressure is blue. And as you can see on the gauge here, it does show down to 30 inches of mercury in vacuum and up to 300 in PSI um, pressure. On the high pressure side, it shows 0 to 500, and it is red. Now, these are two different connections. And this automotive kit comes with these quick connect fittings. This is what you use to connect to the compressor. And there's one for each side. If you look at these, they're different sizes. It's hard to mess, it's hard to plug in it in the wrong place. So the first thing we'll do is we'll get the hoses out. hook up our blue Make sure it is closed. Make sure they're shut. Now we'll figure out which one this goes to and you connect it by pulling the collar in, pushing it on and then letting it go. This is your high pressure and this is low pressure. Make sure it is closed. Closed. So when you put these on, make sure that they are closed. Closed, closed. Then you can put it on the compressor. Closed. Close. So you have blue going to here. Have red going to here and we use this for both of them come in and they come out okay so for for recovery you want to pull from both sides 
So we'll be opening both these up and we'll opening be opening both those up. Um, the, there are two connections here for the middle. There's a large port without a Schrader valve that's fully open into the manifold. That's usually what you charge through and what you recover through. And then there's a one here with a Schrader valve that you can use <coughs> for um, an additional hose or it, it stays shut until you screw something in it that has a Schrader valve depressor center and that pushes on the valve. We're not going to be using that though. So we want this one. So now that all three lines are hooked up, this is what you would connect to your recovery machine to the inlet side and it would draw um, the refrigerant from the system through both sides of the manifold into the yellow line. Um, if the compressor is working, um, you can use a low pressure, um, low volume bag to recover it in. Uh, but most people will want to recover into a empty tank so that they can refill from it. Um, auto shops have a machine that does just that. It automatically extracts it and then when they're ready it draws a vacuum and then puts that gas back into the system. Um, but if you're going to be servicing it you can either use um, a bag to capture it and then dispose of it based on uh, EPA regulations. Um, but in the USA, you're supposed to have a 609 EPA certificate certificate um, in order to handle this. You're not supposed to uh, discharge any refrigerant to the atmosphere, and you are uh, required by law to um, capture whatever you can. So. Um, if I do this, I would hook it up to a, um, a recovery machine and I'll put it into an empty tank. Uh, even if it's a mixed tank to destroy it. Um, the other option, option again is to uh, capture it into a, um, a low pressure bag. <clears throat> There's not a lot of uh, refrigerants, less than two, usually two pounds or 32 ounces it, around there. It's way under five pounds normally. Um, but it uh, depends on what country you're in, what, re what the regulations are <clears throat> for what you're allowed to do. But uh, here, in the, uh, here in the U.S., um, there are fines associated with releasing refrigerant into the atmosphere. You don't do that. So hook that up to a um, recovery machine and evacuate the whole system <clears throat> and when you're when you're ready to do that you would cut this on you would hook this up to the recovery machine I don't have mine here um, and once it starts to draw you would open both these valves and then you would open the valves here and that pushes the Schrader valve down And then it basically does what a uh, compressor, I mean, you can actually get um, a small freezer. Um, if you don't plan on reusing it, you can get a, um, a small refrigerator compressor and hook up plumbing to it. And you can actually use that to compress this from vapor back to liquid and store it in a um, recovery tank. It's an inexpensive way to build your own recovery system. but. Um, that's it in a nutshell. So you have low pressure and high pressure. You hook up to both sides and you're going to pull everything down to zero PSI on both sides. It should be zero when you're done. You can pull a vacuum if you want to. Um, you don't really need to. The main thing is that you capture the refrigerant that is in there. 
Uh, a minuscule amount is okay to release, changing, changing fittings or, or whatnot is okay, but um, anything over trace amounts is not permitted in the U.S. So I have to state that because I have a license. So. Always wear gloves. Um, heavy, heavy gloves, not rubber gloves. Um, the refrigerant, liquid refrigerant, will freeze your skin and give you frostbite. Um, and don't inhale any of it. If you do take the, the the lines off, if you do take these off, make sure that you tape or or cover up all of the openings. You do not want any debris in there, or it will ruin the compressor. Um, moisture you you remove when you evacuate it with a vacuum pump. So when you're ready to put everything back together and recharge it, you will need a one stage or a two stage vacuum pump to draw out all of the moisture and evacuate the system. Uh, moisture will kill the compressor very quickly, which is why you have to remove it. That and you can't, um, uh, moisture can't be compressed. That's, water can't be compressed. That's the main reason why, um, why it damages the um, pistons that and rust if you happen to know someone who has a nitrogen tank um, it's always a good idea once you reassemble everything to um, to hook up this the same way um, connect this to a uh, pressure regulator on the tank and then slowly open your valves to let enough nitrogen in to build up pressure and you just you just want it to go up enough to where you can see on the dial and let it sit for about five to ten minutes if it doesn't drop then you're good to go you can't really check uh, leaks with a vacuum with the with the vacuum pump um, you, you really need to use an inert gas like nitrogen to make sure you don't have any leaks before you um, vacuum the system and then fill it with refrigerant so check for leaks with nitrogen if you can um, if you can't um, as long as you replace o-rings and any of the fittings you remove always replace the o-rings anytime you pull them off it's always a good idea to put new ones on there make sure you don't have any leaks